How are you guys doing? We're just going to, ah, hey, look at that. OK, my name is Justin Louie. I'm some random guy at guavapass.com. Um, and we are bringing you five Ruby tips that we've been learning over the past couple of months. We're going to start with really application specific. And then we're going to broaden out to something hopefully everyone can enjoy. So I'll start off with array.wrap. Um, what this array.wrap does, it allows us to ensure that what we're working with is always going to be array. In particular, we're working with a, a really bad API um, integration point, and they don't return necessarily a hash, or maybe they return an array. We don't know which one they're going to return based upon one or many in that particular response. So we use one way to do it is to do is response is a, an array, right? That's a really common way to do it. Um, a cooler way is definitely array.wrap, and you wrap the response, which then guarantees you that response will be an array. All right, moving along real quick. So Pluck, um, I know some of you guys have seen this one. Pluck is really cool because traditionally a lot of people will do something like lesson. Everything is canceled, right? And I want the name of all the canceled lessons. And right now this takes somewhere around 4.8 seconds, which is a pretty long time. Ruby goes in, instantiates, and loads every single one of the lesson objects, and then we pull out the names. Plex skips a lot of that. It only pulls out the name column or the particular column that we want in this, in this case. And it doesn't instantiate any of the objects. So we went from 4.8 seconds down to a tenth of a second-ish. right? And so this is on our particular database. Um, so here's a cool thing that we've been working on is skipping callbacks, particularly in a thread-safe way. Um, what happens is. A lot of people do validation checks, very, you know, want to make sure data is proper, insured phone numbers are looking good, emails are great. Um, let's say we have a person and we want to upload an embarrassing photo of this crazy guy, right? Um, if you can't see, it's my name up there. But, anyways, uh, what we're going to do is we have a validation that blocks embarrassing photos. But for this particular guy that we want to shame, we need to remove that validation. But in this particular case, let's say, um, the, the upload takes five minutes, and we don't want that five minutes for everyone in the company to skip the validation for, right? We still want other users to be able to have it, this particular validation check. So all you have to do is um, Ruby gives a, doesn't really give us a great way to do this. I apologize about the colors, um, so come see me afterwards if you really want to know about this. But you put an attribute accessor in, and then in the particular validation that you're about to perform, all you do is do a check. And so now we can shame this particular guy, probably uploading a 13-year-old photo of him just bowl on top, just like crazy. <laughs> let's say, um, next tip, let's say there was an online game where in particular you had to click to win. Um, and if you dug around in the website itself, this particular website that's going to remain nameless has a particular endpoint that you can hit. So what are the ways that we want to be able to hit it? Well. If you look at the parallel gem, handling parallel threads is actually really annoying. Not really annoying, but it, it's cumbersome in the sense that you don't want to have too many thread leaks. Right? Parallel does that, takes care of it all for you. So it's a simple for loop. Um, I'm, I'm just going to hit this thing a million times, let's say, in 100 threads. And it just goes out. And it looks for something in particular, i.e., um, in our particular random case. Uh, we were looking for sections 1. 5 and 9 and 14 to appear. And in a million times, they never really appeared. So we didn't win. <laughs> OK, for our last little bit, um, this one's not a Ruby thing, but I think it's something you can all enjoy. Um, iTerm2, if you click command, um, command click any URL, it'll, it'll load it for you so you don't have to like actually copy and paste. Right? Super easy. A one that's a little more obscure is if you option click in a long string. It'll take your cursor and go to that particular position. Um, if you're dealing with the IRB, just note that um, I cheated here. If you scrunch up so it's multi-line, it doesn't work. It has to be in a single line inside the IRB. But if you're in the terminal anyways, um, outside of IRB, this works great. Multi-line, it doesn't really matter. Um, and that's it. Thanks, guys. Uh, we are hiring. We're looking for front-end gurus. Uh, so React, Angular guys, if any of you are in here. Do you, yes. know, do you guys know what Guava Pass does? It's a pass for the uh, student.
Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, uh, okay, I'm allowed to. Oh, cool, cool. Um, so, uh, 10, 10 se uh, 30 seconds. Um, yeah, Guava Pass is a subscription service into various fitness studios. So, things like spinning, yoga. Um, there's also uh, pole dancing. Winston, if you're really interested in pole dancing, I think you know, you, you'd, you'd be good up there, man. You'd be good up there. <laughs> I, I heard a commitment. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys.